now. All right. So, how do you want to do this? Uh, just do it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I have the pre-flat right here. Let me go back in the cockpit. Um, I'll go ahead and call stuff out and you do it. Okay. All right. Um, well, first of all, let's go ahead and power up the uh, plane. Go ahead and turn on the battery master. Battery master is on. And set power to the uh, external. Yep. External power is on. And uh, in theory, we don't want our customers to burn up. So the front door is open. We can go ahead and turn on the AC. Not just yet. I'm going to wait till it goes through its entire startup thing, including a stick shaker before it will allow me to do too much else. Okay. Usually takes about a minute or less to go through that. Right. Uh, you can go ahead and turn on the emergency lights. Oh, I should probably get the emergency power on first. Arm that. And emergency lights. Arm. And uh, go ahead and turn on a beacon or something. Uh, well, nav lights on your side. That's one of the two orange ones. Uh, nav light. On. There you go. Okay. Alright, I'm still waiting for the stick shaker to do its thing here because I can't do any of the others. Do you want to do all of the tests like the cargo smoke? That's up to you. You can do all that if you want. I think we can go ahead and skip that. Alright. Yeah, it might save some time. Yep. Alright, here comes the stick shaker test. We can go ahead and get our altimeters uh, synced, synced up. Okay. Well, I have to wait for this thing to come on first. Yeah, we need the PFDs for that. In fact, we can really save ourselves some time. Uh, once that comes up, if you can go ahead and take care of the flat management computer, that's going to take a while. True. Yeah, that's going to be fun in VR. <laughs> I need those gloves. <laughs> I need those uh, gloves, like the capital glove or the sensory X that they keep talking about, because that's yeah. a hell of a lot better than trying to move my mouse in VR to sync this crap up. I just turned on the uh, switches to get the INS aligned. Okay. Go ahead and set the barometer on my side, 29.88. Mine still says 29.92. Why is that? Hmm. Alright, 29.88 set. Okay, yeah. so FMC, uh, you're going to need to activate your side of the FMC as well to at least just get it to the main page. Um, <clears throat> so, what do I want to do here to the FMC? Uh, you want to hit the FMC2 button. Okay. And then you want to hit flight plan in it, which is to the lower right. Let's go ahead and enter the Fraumann 2. Okay, that's all you need to do. You just need to keep it on that screen. Okay, so MK J P. You know the P means Palisados, right? Yeah, I figured. And we're going to K M I A. Alright. While you're doing that, I'll go ahead and run through some other items. Okay. Initialize IRS. Bam. Okay, what is our cruise for this flight? Um, cruise altitude for this flight is... Um, It is 33,000 feet. 33,000? Okay, so 330. Put that right there. Uh, flight number, I'm just going to give it an arbitrary number. I'm going to call it 949 since that's part of the tail number. Okay, there we go. Got that. Moving on to. Cost index. Uh, what do you want to throw in there? 40? 25. 25? Okay. 5.48. It really doesn't matter. Oh. Did you just turn on the lights? It's dark in here. I can't see it. <laughs> Thank you. Because you know what? In VR, it actually does look like lights. It looks A like lot better, real yeah. lights. <laughs> yep. 
That is too cool. All right, so that's it for that page for now. I don't think we have an alternate, unless you want to just throw like KFLL in there. Yeah, go ahead and put Fort Lauderdale. All right. L alternate. Bam. Okay. All right, next page. Okay, so here's where I'm going to need the takeoff weights, the center of gravity, and all of that. So let's start with center of gravity. What was that again? Uh, center of gravity is 19.7. 19.7. All right, TOCG is center of gravity. There it is. Okay, next give me the zero fuel weight, please. 98.5. in blast in ZFW and last but not least take off gross weight uh, 111.9 1.9 that goes in TOGW there we go okay. all right so we got that that's all we needed for that page so page three Blast fuel, I don't think we need. That's like if you have extra fuel, I think. I think. Alright, so we're done with that. Okay. Uh, what kind of flaps are we looking for? You said flex was what, 25? What was 25? Flex. Flex down. Oh, you mean temperature? Uh, entries out of range. Damn it. Temperature is 28. No, We're taking off with flaps 13. Okay. That's what I needed. Alright, so flaps 13, let me put that in first because it won't let me put in the other stuff otherwise. Bam. Okay, that makes our stabilizer 4.5, which is... Hold on, let me get our config. It's on your side, you can go ahead and set that. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so I'm looking for 4.5. Here we go, 4.5. Monitor right. radar display. Go around. Wind shear ahead. Yeah. Wind shear ahead. Wind shear ahead. Do we actually have a headwind? I think they said winds were calm, right? In uh, in uh, Jamaica, but there there is a there is a. I think it said wind shear. Okay. Well, but I'm there, not there, there's, about there's, that. Star, there's storm in, in in our area here. So. All right. Well, we'll be way past that by the time. Okay. So temperature 28 Celsius. Yeah. Okay. 28 C. And put that in OAT for outside air temperature. Okay, check confirm V speeds. V1 is 129, VR is 135, and V2 is 143. Okay. So there we go. All right, now Good. we need to start adding in some waypoints. I do not have the actual thing here because, well, we had to change the flight plan at the last minute. Um, I, I, if you want, I can go ahead and read them off to you. Yeah, I know you said the first one was SIA, right? Yeah, I, I got them right here. First okay. waypoint is uh, Mobe, which is SIA. Alright, so we'll put that in front of top of descent. Alright, 73 miles away. That must be the one because I'm sure they're not asking for the one 7,000 miles away. Okay, after SIA we have? Uh, Puto, Papa, Uniform Tango, Uniform Lima. Papa. Uh, okay. Let's see, V2 is 143, so I'm going to set up our speed. Yes. Uh, 143 plus 20, I believe, is the rule, so 163. Yes, 20 knots. So I wrote the speed down, what the hell? Oh, here it is. Yeah, just go ahead and make uh, okay, a that's climb set. out. 
an even 170. I'm sorry, 20, 160, yeah, 170 okay. on the auto throttle. All right, so let's set that to 170. Mm -hmm. And runway heading is what, 120? I'll tell you what, let me call and get a runway. I'm actually, pretty sure we're going to get 12. That's actually, the default runway. All right, according to this, we are taking off at runway... Set for 30. Runway 12. Okay, so that's 120. Yeah. All right. Well, that is done. Hey, look at that. Stars are coming out. That's awesome. Except for that big, huge white dot in my face here, which is the mouse cursor in VR. Yep. You can see the stars through the clouds. All right. So we got that set. Uh, did you get the AC by chance? Get the what? The AC, the packs. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Alright. Uh, I'm familiar with this overhead panel. Alright, where is the air conditioning on this thing? Here we go. Uh, PAX Auto. Yep, that's one. That's the other. And everything else should be on auto. Alright, uh, also grab the hydraulics. We should have the left and right pumps already on, but we're going to need the trans and the aux also on. Yeah, so everything should be in the bottom position, basically. That's one, and then we need the other one. Yep, there we go. All right, so both of those are set. Uh, might want to kick that beacon on, because I think we're just about ready for the APU. Okay. And then let me know when you got that. Um, I'm going to activate the middle tanks. For some strange reason, I find it easier, at least for me, to run the middle tanks for the... APU since I'm going to run out of gas in that tank first anyway. Don't you need a start pump for the APU or is a start pump for the engines? A uh, start pump is usually for the engine, but with this uh, APU, it's real easy. You just like pull it to start and it does its thing. In the MD-80, because that's where the start pump came from. The MD-80, the start pump is for the uh, APU. Yeah. Alright, if we're, if we're ready to do engine start, let's go ahead and button up the front door. All right, yeah, you handle that. I'm going to turn on our APU. Okay, I think I just opened the main door. Wait a second here. I thought you had those doors open. Yep, should already be open. They're open on my end. Unless I have to close them. Uh, yeah, you're the pilot in command. You got you to gotta close them. All right, so closing main door, closing cargo hatches. And go ahead and remove... Uh, Let me get the GPU. Up. Hold on. And AC card. No, can't remove the GPU yet. APU is not up. I uh, hear it. I hear it spooling up. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's coming up. It's not quite there yet. It's about uh, halfway. Up oh, there we go. It's already at 100 now. All right. So now that the APU is on, let me get the APU air, and we get the APU gen. There we go. Lights should have switched on your side to APU. Um, hang on a second, let me double check. Yeah, just look overhead, you'll see them. Blue lights. Yes, APU, uh-huh. All right, so I'm turning off exterior power. Uh huh Okay, so we are now running on APU. Isn't that and lovely? Ground air, I'm taking you out. Ground power, I'll take you out. Uh, the only thing we got left is cones and wheel chocks, which I will remove once we're absolutely positively ready for pushback. All right. Oh, one thing I will need, you know those floodlights, ground floods, they're over your head right now, so I'm turning those on. Ground floodlights. Yep, and also the logo light. Uh, you know what we might also need is the icing, like the windshield ice and all that. Oh, yeah, sure. That is... Um, where are those controls? Directly uh, above. Directly above the windshield and the I caution lights test. Okay, wind foil, engine... Ah, here we go. Okay, those two are on. Okay. Do we have our seat belts and no smoking on? Yes. 
Outstanding. All right. I think we are about ready for an engine start. What do you think? Um, yep, let's go ahead and push back first. Remove cones and chocks. Okay. Uh, my thing just disappeared. Cones off. Wheel chocks off. Okay. Uh, parking brakes off. Uh-huh. And shift P. Which way are we turning? To the this left here, side? Take a look. Uh, just go straight back. All I'll right. tell you when to stop. And we are pushing back. Okay. I'm going to start up with engine one. Or excuse me, engine two. Now remember, turn on all the fuel pumps. Yep. You got to turn off the AC. Yep. Of the packs. Yep. And um, turn on, make sure your igniters are on. Yep. All the igniters are on. There goes the first engine. And that 22 N2, give it gas. Oh, it's got gas. It's automatic. Damn, look at that night sky. It's automatic in this one. Okay. All right, shift P. We'll push back far enough. All right. Uh, hold on. I'm seeing a little bit more space on my end. Let me know if we're about to hit the grass. We're about to hit the grass. Alright, so we'll stop the push back there. Let's get that parking brake back on. Yeah, Thank you, Mr. Pushback running. Truck. <laughs> uh, here we have engines running. Yep, engine one is currently up. I'm just waiting for the starter to kick off. Right now the red light is still on. Okay. I keep saying engine one, but it's really engine two. Yeah. Alright, there we go. The starter just clicked off. So we'll switch for that engine, and I always forget, I think the isolation valve needs to be open. Alright, engine one should be starting up. Yep, there it goes. Alright, flaps 13 please. Flaps 13. While I'm waiting for the engine to pop up, let me go to the outside view real quick. Okay, I'll get the taxi lights. Now, in this one, taxi lights is actually nose lights, right? Yeah, just put it to the middle position and you should be good. There it is. I just saw it come on. Yep. Alright, that is everything that we need right there. Uh, hang on, did we turn back on packs? Uh, if the starter light is out for engine one, then yes, you can turn the packs back on. I'm still on the outside camera. I'm getting some good shots here. See here? The cinema's the thing, you know? All right, we got a good... Uh, we got a good light off on engine one and engine two. That engine one settle down. Okay. All right, I'll go ahead and get the packs. Yep, packs can come back on. All right, now, since you've got the packs, I am going to turn off the APU. Yes, APU can come off. So, APU Gen is off, APU Air is off, and APU itself is off, so that should be spooling down. Yep. Uh, let me see here. We want to go to the north? We're going to the north, right? We're actually going to the south right now. What are you talking about? Uh, to taxi to runway, or are you talking after we take off? Oh, uh, once we take off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give you the taxi directions. I just got taxi clearance. Okay. And then I'll turn on progressive taxi. You won't be able to see it. No, I don't need it at this airport. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that come on, man. Come on. That is, that is. Alright, uh, you ready to push off? Okay, let me see here. Hydraulics are on, fuel is good, transponder is set to 2200. Ice protection for the windscreen is on. We don't need anti-ice, do we? Um, okay. We might once we get up to altitude. Yeah, beacon light is uh, on, parking brake after start. Uh, AC is back on, we got flaps. Um, spoilers please. Uh, yeah, I was trying to. I can't try it yourself. 
You can't arm the spoilers? I cannot. It's not letting me. There you go. All right. Thank you. And where is the auto brake on this thing? Um, there is none. None? Okay. Not that I could find anyway. Stable, I have a trim is set. All right, we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and uh, do our taxi. Okay. And One thing uh, I will need is that weather. And we need the TARA. Okay, there we go. And we can go ahead and set this on fuel. I know you like fuel. Yes. Yeah, I'm paranoid about that. I gotta have fuel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alright. Set on fuel. Okay. Alright, let's start a taxi. Whoa, the radar is on. Yes, I just turned it on. Which is fine. Okay. Yeah, so make, make believe play. There's not real people out there to get fucked. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hit the gas. All right. Okay, parking brake is coming off. And spool up engines. Any day now. That's the thing with this thing. You have to like barely touch it. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, it's funny. They said they did the, they redid the, the throttle on this plane. Mm. It feels even more exaggerated. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, that's a chief complaint, especially with ground handling in particular. But this then is supposed to be this is supposed to be more accurate. Well, that's just the thing. See, I've never actually flown a seven one seven, so I really don't know if it is or if it isn't. Exactly. <laughs> I know that some of the pilots that I've spoken to over the years, in particular the AirTran pilots, have uh, said that this thing, you know, pulls like a rocket, but they never really commented on ground handling, and to be honest with you, I never bothered to ask. Alright, I'm making a right here. Yep, you're on course. Let's go straight down to runway 12 and then roll a left. Yeah, I'm still trying to get used to this tiller. That's the part that I don't like, is the, the tiller. It seems like I'm always overcompensating with it. Alright, let's put the speed back here. I love these taxi lights though. Holy crap, that is awesome. <laughs> you can see Kingston across the bay. Everything looks beautiful. You know, I don't yep. think... You know, it's not that often that I do any kind of night videos. I think I might want to do more of them. Are you getting the weather? Oh yeah. Lightning, lightning in the uh, in the distance? Oh yeah, it's like off to the west or whatever every now and then I see it. Yeah, the thing about night flying is um, when you're coming into land, if you don't have that reference to the horizon, it's, it's, it's significantly harder. Yeah, well, now, luckily, a lot of this times, thing I, does have I auto just, land. Exactly, and I, I just use the, uh, the ILS. Yeah. And it just comes on in. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking as far as us getting into Miami. Is we're probably going to want to pick one of the ILS approaches. Uh, definitely, yes. If I had to guess, I would probably say we're probably going to end up on 9 uh, right. Um, hang on a second here. We, did we get the meter for, um... Yeah, they said the wind was like one, one something at eight knots. One, one, something. two, one, one, seven at twelve. Twelve knots, okay. So yeah, we're definitely going to end up heading to the east. Because it's not enough of a wind for us to use a crosswind runway. And honestly, I would not want to come in on a crosswind runway. Even though this thing has good stopping power and good thrust reversers, too short? Yeah, you can barely bring a 737 in on that thing. Barely. But yeah, the two east to west runways are going to be our better bet. Alright, we are closing in on runway 1 2. I think because I turned off the dynamic lighting, I'm not seeing the actual taxi lights in front of me. Yeah. But that's okay, I can do that. Alright, All right. slow us down a little bit here. Alright, while you're doing that, I'll go through the before takeoff business. Alright. 
Alright, I am just about ready for that checklist. Let me just swing us around here. Okay, we are at hold short. Parking brakes on. Alright, flaps is 13. Um, mm -hmm. Confirm. Uh, flight controls, free and clear. Yep, doing my wipeout right now. Turn yeah. off taxi lights, turn on landing lights. Alright, you want me to hit that? Yeah, go ahead and get that. Okay. Landing lights, landing lights, landing lights. Okay, all three landing lights are on. Let me go outside and confirm. Yes, landing lights are on. Okay. Um, transponder T-A-R-A. -A. Yep, it's there right now. Flight attendants, please be seated for departure. You are good to go. Okay, okay. Parking brake coming off. All right, so takeoff briefing. When you take off, just go ahead and fly straight. Climb runway and maintain uh, 5,000 runway heading and then pull a left. And, right. uh, just make your way over to Mabe and we'll get on course and set, and set the autopilot. Okay. Alright. There it is, runway 1 2. Uh, are you going to use the auto throttle? Uh, no, I always go manual on that. Okay. Alright. If you want, you can arm it after I take off. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know what was up with that. Turn on all the lights. I'll get those right now. All right, I'm at 4,000. There, I only missed one light actually. <laughs> Which one? Ah, some high int, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> oh, high intensity, yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, high intensity bulbs. All right, uh, I the, am 4,500. Blue mountains off to your left, so um, you can still see them, so you can go ahead and make a turn whenever you think you, you're high enough to hear them. Which is definitely not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, I might need to take it up to about 7. I mean, we got some decent speed going here. But Wait a second. I am a little fast. 
Does this thing have a flight and direct switch? The no. You just want to arm the AP. Yeah, it's nagging us to make a left turn. Yeah. Uh, once our altitude, we're approaching uh, 7,000. You can go ahead and make your left turn now. All right. Well, I'm still climbing, so yeah, work with it. Uh, we got a master caution. Yeah, that's because of my speed. Oh, okay. I'm going a little too fast here. Yep, this is a speed bird. Yeah, this thing will take off and fly like a rocket all night long. All right, let's do after takeoff checklist. Okay. Gear is up, hydraulics are yep. on. Yep. Uh, APU is off, flaps APU's are off. Up. Yep. Um, spoilers disarm. Uh, yep, it is now. And uh, I think that's it. Okay. Okay, we are crossing 89. Okay, we're at 8900. I'll go ahead and get the landing lights. I'm trying to keep a nice even turn here. It's actually more of a level turn than anything else. But it is giving me a really good view of Kingston here, so I'm going to take another picture. So we're just about lined up with the magenta line, so I'm going to straighten us out. Um, we are closing in on 10K, so lights? Or are they already go, off? Uh, yeah, lights are off. Let me go ahead and uh, get your, uh, your auto throttle. Okay, no. For, when you, for whenever you're ready to engage it. This is one of the few planes where the auto throttle is tied in with the autopilot. Yeah, so as soon as you turn on the autopilot, we're good to go. Exactly. I'm, I'll put it at 270. Okay. okay. I'm thinking as far as Mach, if we're going up to 33, we can probably take this sucker up to like Mach 0.78. Uh, okay, that's fine. Whoa! What? I'm experiencing massive turbulence on my side. Oh, I'm in VR. There's no such thing as turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah, all the little tricks that they use to give you the effect of turbulence involve shaking the camera. Well, yeah. my camera is on my head, so if I want turbulence, i got to literally move my head like this. Alright, we need to get out of this altitude. Uh, go ahead and crank, crank up the speed and uh, increase the vertical speed get us out of here, because uh, I'm getting tossed around big time. Alright, well you know what, let's go ahead and engage now, because uh, it's basically on course right now. Alright. Uh, if this thing will hold steady, for me, in my case, it's bouncing up and down because I can't get a serious thing. So uh, why don't you do it? All right, let me see if I can. Okay, that's one. And I need nav. And FMS speed. No, not FMS speed. That's okay. Now, the plane's banking. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. It's trying to get okay, us on cool. course. All right, cool. Should and straighten us out. Go ahead and pull. pull. Here, I got it. Pull on this. Yep, it's doing its thing. It's doing its thing. It's good. Is it climbing? Yeah. And it's right, just cool. about set for 293-ish. Yes, it's, it's climbing up a little bit. Oh, it's set for 308 right now, which is fine. Are you, are you using FMS? So it, it's taking its speed commands from the flight management computer? Yeah. Which, if okay. we want, we can set a flight plan on the FMC, and you'll see that for all of the waypoints, it's already got the numbers in there. Okay, that's fine. So Remember, by the time we reach top of climb, we should be at 272 knots, and then it'll vary along the way somewhat. Okay. We're climbing like a rocket ship, getting out of these clouds. In fact, uh, we're still in clouds. We need to go ahead and turn on the anti-ice. Yes. Yeah, we're definitely going to need that. For the pito. Uh, so we don't want airfoil. All we want is... Stabilizer motion. Uh, damn it. Ice protection. 
air data heat do we have all the lights do we have more lights uh hold on a second here i'm trying to find the lights for the incandescent there we go. bulbs i got it there it is there it is yeah i'm not even sure what exactly you press but yeah that's it <laughs> it's a button, it's a button that's a that's the one I was looking for. Okay. Okay, got it. All right. Yeah, the, the uh, pito heat uh, is on. Oh wow! Now the cockpit looks totally different. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This is the improvements that they've done to this thing. It looks and it feels real. It feels like I'm sitting in this thing right the now. Real thing. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen light look so natural like this. And of course, you know, natural is kind of the wrong term to use for something that's essentially an incandescent oh. bulb. But it looks real. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. It looks real. Sent a fuel tank sucking air. Don't All right. That. Yep. Okay, so that means we have about 11,000 left. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hopefully the uh, turbulence will settle down once we get up to altitude because on my end, it is throwing me up and down. But you're absolutely right. The, the, the graphics in here, the textures are just absolutely unreal. It looks better than before. Yep. Set your barometer, by the way. We are oh, currently yeah, standing. 2992, yeah. Uh, if it, if you can just pull it. That makes yep. it standard. Yeah, you just yep. pull it. Got mindset, and we're closing in on 19,000 right now. So, good to go. Man, this is a lot easier when you're flying with somebody else. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yes, I highly, highly agree. A lot less work. A lot. All right, so we're approaching SIA right now. So, Donald Sanks to VOR. According to this, we have about 51 nautical miles to go. So, about seven minutes ish. We're also approaching top of climb, which should be just after we make the turn from Sia and start heading towards Cuba. Okay, according to this progress, whoa, Miami is one hour 45 minutes away. Uh, okay, I'll take that. 500 and, 514 miles. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. Two fully functioning flat management computers. Damn, this thing is... Oh, yeah. Yeah, play around with the one on your side. You still got it on the main page. Now that I've programmed everything on my side, if you punch in uh, flight plan, the second button from the left top, it'll put you on the same page that I'm at. And yeah. then, of course, you can scroll up and down and so on and so right, forth. Right, right, right. Wow. Yeah, it's got the miles in there, the speed that we expect yep. to be at, where our top of descent is, everything's in there. The only thing is, of course, that flight plan discontinuity, but that's going to be rectified once I select which star we're coming in on. You want to know what uh, uh, an idea as an add-on that I have for this thing? Now, bear with me here. I know it sounds a little bit uh, stupid, but bear with me. Okay. Uh, av an avatar, because you know, the, when you go on the outside, you can see your pilot, the heads move and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, if we can make an avatar that sits in the pilot seat when you're in there, okay? And oh, then whatever okay. you... Whatever you do, the avatar does about a second later. So, for instance, you uh, you uh, turn the uh, altitude knob up to 33,000 feet. The second you stop, the avatar actually does that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that would make sense. That's a hell of a lot of a animation. But if they could pull off something like that, yeah, yeah, that's a really good idea. That would be sweet. I don't know how much work it would take to animate something like that. But, you know, if you figure they could do stuff like... You know, the marshallers and all of that stuff. I'm pretty sure they can pull that up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's funny. Um, I was tinkering around with the uh, the MD-82, the Leonardo one. Mm -hmm. Weather radar, if you screw with the antenna angle, it actually makes a big difference in, with regards to what you see. Really? The tilt. Huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to screw with the tilt now. I'm going <coughs> to go ahead and tilt it. Uh, let's see here now. We're up. I'm going to go ahead and tilt it down and okay. watch what happens to the screen. looking down more now and not much is changing mm, so they yeah. don't have a whole heck of a lot of precipitation in the way it looks right now if, if i make it look up it should clear up a little bit because there's not that many clouds above us right yeah that makes sense yeah the other day um for my test flight with this thing 
I actually flew from Pittsburgh to Atlanta, so you know I was trying to see if I could see the traffic on this thing. Yeah. It works. <laughs> it works like gangbusters. <laughs> You know how busy Atlanta is, so yeah, that was like the supreme test there. Mm -hmm. All right, how are we doing on climb? 28,000. I put the nose down a little bit to 1,800 feet per minute. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to change this to Mach number. There you go. All right. Uh, of course, the only downside this FMC, or at least I haven't found a way to do it yet, it still shows the speed in knots, but it looks like, just from what I know about, you know, cruise altitudes and corresponding indicated airspeed, it looks like it's going to try and hold us roughly around Mach 0.77. Hold on, let me verify that. Yeah, yeah, it's about right. Okay. Now, I actually did not check my perf page, because that's how we can find out here. Economy climb, 0 0.77. Next page, cruise, 0 0.77. All right, can I change that before we get there? 0 0.79. speed through the auto throttle manually. I never let it take control of the uh, biometric computer. Okay. It's a little bit too much automation for me, so. Mm -hmm. No, I get it. I get it. Kind of makes sense there. Wait a second here. Hang on. Hold up. Hold up. Mm -hmm. What waypoint are we just now passing? See ya. Oh. Yeah. What? No. No, we're just now passing Montego Bay. This is Sia. So we're now heading towards the Cuba. Hell out? <laughs> this whole time it took us this long to get to Mobe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on a second here. Might I also call your attention to the ground speed? Right now, 451. How long have we been flying? Did you uh, set, start a clock? I did not. I always forget the clock. I don't even know where to find the clock, to be honest with you. But yeah, it's like a one hour, two hour flight, or close to a two hour flight. Yeah, I understand that, but to go from Kingston to maybe it took that long? Mm -hmm. Well, don't forget, too, we went, Altitude. We, way yeah, we went towards the right. eastern side of we, the we, island, we, then turned around. Right, we took the scenic route. Yeah, yeah usually basically. I just fly over the center there, I don't fly over Mandible, you know? Shortest distance between two points, a straight line. Yep. All right, how we stay? It is right, compensating for speed. It's going to bring us up to 0.79 Mach. There we go. Perfect. That's what I love about this aircraft. You know, y'all can keep your PMDG and all of that stuff. This is where it's at. This aircraft right here is where it's at. I love flying this thing. You know me, I hate flying airliners. <laughs> yeah. This PMDG. I could fly all day long. You'd, you'd think PMDG would come out with a, a proprietary shared cockpit solution by now, considering how popular the 737 is. Uh, leave it to somebody like TFDI to come up with this. I mean, yeah, granted, they did have some teething pains, because remember the first time that we tried this thing, and it didn't work. wonderful yeah. that was. Yeah. Whatever they did, whatever voodoo they worked, it, it worked. <laughs> it worked? <laughs> This no, is this definitely is, the smoothest experience that I've ever had. Yeah, this is, I mean, of all the two liner flights that I've had, this one is by far the most uh, the most pleasant one. Yep. And the fact that it works so well in VR, no less. Like, I can interact with everything that I need to interact with in real time. If I had one of those little gloves that I was talking about earlier, I'm pretty sure I could lift my finger up and, you know, like flip one of these switches and whatnot, and that would just add to the experience. Uh, yeah. You have to hold your head steady when you when you work the mouse, right? Uh, yes, because it is linked to your head. So right now on my side, I'm actually putting my mouse cursor in the center of my vision, and then I'm moving my head around so that the viewer can actually see the white dot moving around. 
So yeah, if I wanted to, I could actually just use this as head tracking. I really don't have to touch the mouse because on the throttle side of my Cytec X52, I've got a left and a right mouse button. Right. So right. all I have to do is look at what I want to look at and then just click the button and it will allow me to hit that switch. That's right. But the glove will be a hell of a lot easier. That's one of the things that I'm probably going to invest in uh, before the year is out. I know there's two different gloves that are coming, but I'm trying to figure out which of the two is making more headway. But we're talking about something that's anywhere from like 300 to almost 500 bucks. So. For a pair of gloves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. But I am definitely committed to this, that is for sure. Well, while we're flying, we may as well do some monitoring and controlling, so let's go ahead and go to the system selector. Uh, click status, this is the major engine, everything looks fine there. Yep, I don't see anything red or yellow, so that's the important thing. We have hydraulics, everything is good there. Yep, everything is nominal. Electrical system. It's all on, everything that's supposed on to be on anyway. Battery is not discharging, which is very good. And uh, here's a pneumatic system. Now, did you know that the 787 doesn't have a pneumatic system? It's really? All Seriously? It's all, it's all electrical. Huh. There no, I did no, not know that. It's a bleedless aircraft. Wow. So, I wonder... Okay, that brings to mind a good question, then. Are they eventually going to get to the point where they try to retrofit some of the other aircraft with the systems that they're designing for, like, the 787? Or is it just physically impossible? No, you, you, can't, you can't do that. The, uh, the reasons why they took out the bleed systems out of the 787 was to save on weight. Okay. Everything was electrical, so they, they use batteries and everything. Uh, besides, uh, the bleed system has a lot of ducts and a lot of pipes. Oh, and, that's so. right. That's right. Yeah, the 787 is a, is a bleedless aircraft. I think I just saw a shooting star. Or at least, <laughs> or at least no, I, I like, hope it was a shooting star. I hope it's not like another plane. I don't see anything on TGAS, so we're pretty good there. And we're stable at 0.79. 0.79 out of 33,000 feet. Yep, they did a good job with this plane. Very good job. All right, closing in on Putul. Virtually everything is modeled. Wow. Oh, yeah. Uh, looks like the longest leg is going to be obviously over Cuba, to heading to the VORUCA. Mm -hmm. Once we get past that, since UCA is closer to Havana, um, the rest of that time is just basically skirting over to the Bahamas <coughs> and then coming down. So, my plan is by the time we get to the top of descent, we should be able to figure out which runway we're coming in on. So um, maybe we can rely on Active Sky for that. Yes. Yeah. If you, you, if you want, you can just go with Active Sky and you know determining you know based on the wind direction and speed, ascertain what runway you're gonna need. But yeah, I'll just do an that only works guess half the time. Well, considering the fact that technically, as far as the sim is concerned, we're doing it VFR. As long as the winds don't change dramatically, you know, like going from east totally to the west, yeah, we should be fine with whatever runway we pick. Right. Now, as a general rule, just out of curiosity, when two blinders fly at night, do they keep the lights on or do they keep them off? Uh, it depends on the lights. Stuff. Let me see what it, let me see what it looks like. Okay, the floodlights, uh, those should be off. Hang on, the dome light is right here, so... Yeah, turn that off. Yeah, that's fine. So this is what they normally fly with. Okay, cool. I don't even know if these lights under the dash are usually on. I think it's just the glare shield lights and so on. We might be able to dim that. Where the hell is that control for that? Oh, you know what else I need to figure out? Uh, what is the secret to closing this up? There it is. Okay. Alright, so we got map light. Yes, there is. Okay, there but is I don't a need that. Like, it lit up on my side. What the hell? 
going to turn that off because I don't think I need to see my rotor pedals right now. Map light. Okay. Oh, that is so cool. That is Do crazy. I have one too? And you should. If you go by where the iPad is and remove the iPad, it's literally right behind it. The little pedestal that it's on, you've got to click on that pedestal, like the rounded portion of the pedestal behind it. Yeah. Um, where, right where it suctions onto the window, that that little connecting piece there. Unfortunately, I can't see it. I can. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> is it the map light? Right. So the map light is directly over your seat. <sighs> It's exactly what it claims to be. You're going to take out a paper map and read it. There you go. You got light above you. Well, you, you only see it when you look at your seat. So the map light is actually just a, a lit up seat. That is, uh, that is pretty cool. Yep. And then there is a floor light. Yeah, that's the one that uh, I was playing around with earlier for the rudder. This funny as hell. Map light. <laughs> yep. Uh, what other dimmers are on here that, that uh, happen to work? That's what I'm looking for right now. I know there is one for the panel. Oh, there is a flight director switch on here. Oh, there is? Okay. Uh -huh. Not that we really need it. But... And there's that, which we're okay. really playing around with what? before. And there's this switch here. see that in the bottom of my uh, headset. The bottom lights. Yeah. See? Oh. Oh, okay. That's how we normally have it set up. So, if you want, I can get that back on, but like with just barely any brightness. So, something like that. Where, where are those knobs? They are on the overhead. Um, you got the windshield wiper. It's on my side, by the way. You got the okay. windshield wiper, you got the dome, you got the thunderstorm light, which I still have no idea what the hell that does. I'm assuming it's a thunderstorm light. The, the thunderstorm light, go ahead and flip it and see what it does. It lights up the whole cabin. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that it does. That it does. All right, let's turn that off. Yeah. That's kind of bright in the headset. Because <laughs> remember, I got no <laughs> other light except for that. All right, so yeah, you see those funky knobs that have like the gray yeah, and then the black. Yeah, That's the two of them. Like the inner knobs are the incandescent bulbs and then the outer rings are our orange lights on the overhead and the panel and the clear shield. Okay, cool. Makes All sense. right, navigation update. We are 5.7 nautical miles from Putul. And next stop is Yuka. So that means we should be passing the Horn of Cuba. If you look to the right somewhere, it should be out there. I'm going to go to the outside view and see if I can see it. Uh, I can't see the land, but uh, I believe it. We might have already passed it. It is possible. Unfortunately, I don't have the map for this route. Like, I don't have a sky vector map with me. There's a flight that's yeah. not moving on your, uh, on your uh, FMS. Yeah, that's uh, after the star, or where the right, star is. Right, 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 right. I'll go ahead and hop into that seat when we hit the top of the set. Okay, I'll switch over. Which we may as well start planning. All right, so. Well, we need to know how top of the set should be about 100 and maybe between 100 and 105 miles out. Roughly, and it will calculate that for you. You'll notice that it already put top of descent before Zala. <laughs> okay, cool. But that's going to depend on what star we put in. So let me do it on my side here if you want to follow along on the other side. Yeah, I'm watching. All right, so. Okay, so KMIA, click 
Transition, the transition waypoint for the Poe uh, 5 arrival mm -hmm. is Ursus. Really? Yes. Well, that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so let it, me it, see. It, it, here, here, here. The waypoints that I gave you, actually the waypoints I gave you are the Poe 5. If you have Ursus, then you have Poe. Then the next, next waypoint is going to be, um, uh, there's Lovely, and then there's... Um, this junior which j-u-n-u-r which is probably expired okay. but the point is the way the waypoints in that plan mm -hmm. the, the other waypoints i've read i haven't read to you yet they are on the 4 5 arrival so in other words the plan because remember a, a, a star or an acid is simply a collection of waypoints you yeah can either, basically you can either have the waypoints chronologically or you can categorize it you know, you have your uh, SID, you have your route, then you have your star. In my case, I hate fighting with uh, the FMC for the SIDs and the stars. I just enter a nice long way over the waypoints. So the, all these these remaining waypoints, I want to say, are on the POE 5 star. There is uh, Zala, POE, Flipper, Lovely, Lesset, John Poe, and that takes us to Miami. Okay, so do this, if you don't mind. Let me head over to your side here and I'm going to hit clear and Zola alright so that got rid of that okay. now I have Fowey and I've got Ursus as our transition coming into runway 9 ILS insert that there you go and what do we have Fowey, Junior, Lovely let's go up DHP, Grit, Inez, and Runway 9. Bam! Perfect. Right there. Perfect. So now basically, assumes, we just have to follow that in, and it'll tell us assumes, top of the scent. That assumes Runway 9 is going to be an active runway. Um, yeah, it will be. I'm pretty sure. Uh, what was the weather again? Uh, it was 117. Point, winds 117 at 12. So right. 90 is a, is a good guess. Yeah, because I really don't want to crop, come in on that crosswind runway. I, I'm telling you, I hate that freaking crosswind runway. <laughs> yep. All right, let me see how much distance we got here. So I'm going to increase my ND. Okay, there's UCA Waypoint, which is currently 80 miles away and closing really quickly. So about 10 minutes flying time, roughly. Um, you know it also shows our elapsed time and our time remaining too, right? For, for the waypoint, right? No, in total, like total flying time, based Get on... Get the hell out of here! Is that what that is? Yeah, in that upper right-hand corner, 
yeah, I see right it. below it, it says 00 0.56 and then 00 0.54 or 0.34. One of those is counting up, the other one's counting down. I forget which is which, but that's your actual time for the rest of the route. Uh, I thought I thought that was the uh, time for the, between the waypoints. No, that's actually right above it, but it's kind of weird how it looks. Yeah, okay, I see it now. It yeah, doesn't show again. it the way that you would normally see it for the clock, so it's really telling right. us that we've got, what, nine minutes? Nine point three minutes? I don't even know how it's dividing up those fractions, to be honest with you. <laughs> that is, thanks for pointing that out. I would, would have never guessed. I'm learning so much about this plane now. I love wow. this aircraft, and this is exactly why. It's just so user-friendly. They knew what they were doing when they came up with it. It's just a shame that it took so long for them to come up with it. Are you talking Boeing or are you talking the Boeing. FBI? Boeing itself. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because, I mean, you figure, how long has this airframe itself been around? Since, what, McDonnell Douglas days? This, the, the, this airframe has been around since the Douglas Corporation days. Back right. in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, the DC-9. Right. So you take, like, something that is basically a tried and true airframe, and then you update right. the avionics to a standard like this. Right. That's just incredible. <laughs> yep. This is like the the best permutation of this aircraft out of all the usual family, like the Mad Dog family or whatever. Which is interesting because this is more, it's, this is at the higher end regional jet size. Yep, pretty much. Right. Pretty much. But the, 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 demand, the, the demand for this particular model plane has gone through the roof. Unfortunately, Boeing stopped making them back in 2002. Yeah, which is really a shame. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm really sad that AirTran in particular went out of business because they were definitely my favorite airline. And they were the first ones to actually use the 717. Yeah. So, I mean, this airline and this um, aircraft have such a history together. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this flight with the AirTran livery, you know, in honor of them. Because really, if it wasn't for them, I don't think the 717 would have taken off as well as it did. That's a good point. That is a good point. All right, I am looking out the pilot side window and I, I'm starting to see an island. So I'm thinking somewhere under that weather is Cuba. I yes. do have airports showing on my little thing. I'm gonna add waypoints so that way I can get a better idea as to what's there. Let's see, V-O-R-N-D-B. Okay, yeah, there's a whole bunch of waypoints ahead of us. So yeah, we're getting kind of close to Havana and them areas. Still no traffic on my end. Um, let me click TCAS. Nope, I don't see anything on the TCAS at all. But you know what, I'm okay with that. Me too, brother. Me as well. because I can tell just by how many VORs and airports I'm looking at where the coastline is, basically. Yeah, yeah, the land once, mass. once we pass UCA, it's going to be really quick to get through Cuba, and we're pretty much going to get to the top of the scent right around Ursus. That's right. Cuba is long and skinny. Yeah. Yep. I think there's probably the most water that we will have to deal with is what we're passing by right now. Because, I mean, the rest of this is, what, the Bahamas and then whatever little strip of water. <laughs> I call it a little strip, but it's the Atlantic Ocean between Bahamas hey, and Florida. Did you see that video I posted to my Facebook page about the, uh, the algae blooms coming out of uh, Lake Okeechobee in Florida? Yes, yeah, I didn't get to watch the video because unfortunately at work my phone is on mute so I can't really yeah. hear it, it's kind of no point. But yeah, that's something that really doesn't surprise me. I've been touting for years that, you know, that kind of stuff was going to come back to haunt us. So, I'm just living long enough to see it and it ain't pretty. It's pretty bad from what I saw. I mean, you know, it's foul beaches on both sides of the coasts. I mean, the lake is all jacked up. Animals mm -hmm. are dying everywhere. 
Yeah, I was reading somewhere they're um, having like dolphins, dead dolphins, dead uh, turtles, and all of that washing up on shore. I'm like, yeah, that kind of stuff scares the hell out of me. Yeah, it's pretty depressing. Pretty depressing. That's all we need is to start losing more species on this planet. Just throw the whole damn thing out of whack. End up going away at a dinosaur. Alright, so I'm looking at our clock. According to the clock, hang on a second here. 57 minutes have passed. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and go to the FMC, click, click on Frog. Okay. Alright, okay, so here's where things don't make any sense. Alright, so. It says, according to this, the top number is counting up, the bottom number is counting down. Right. Okay? So, the bottom... Wait a minute. Both of them are counting up. Mm, you know what? You might be right. One, uh, well, I know one is definitely the elapsed time. I'm inclined to think that the top number is the elapsed time. Because, but, according to the flight management computer, we have 303 miles... Uh, to go to get to Miami. Right. That sounds about right, yeah. Which is a which is about an hour ish. Yeah. Now that ETA is that is that estimated time arrival Zulu? Yes, it should be. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, three hundred miles is about forty five to fifty minutes. So maybe that's what that is. I'm guessing that it may change depending on how our speed changes or, you know, if we have a headwind or a tailwind. Right. Which we can always check that on ND, which says that we do have a seven knot tailwind and a seven knot crosswind coming from the east. Which is not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not going to humbug us too much. Right. All right, let me get this dot out of the way here. Okay, we are currently over Cuba, so I'm going to go outside real quick and hopefully I can actually pick yeah, this up oh, on wow. video. Yeah, I'm getting a good top down. Look at Wow. All right, 10 yeah. miles out from UCA. One minute, point three. Our top of descent is... Whoa, 22, 22 minutes. is what I'm seeing on this thing. But then it's giving me an estimate too, so. All right, all right. Yeah, it's really not gonna take us that long to, to get there. Because if you look at my ND on the left side here, you'll see Ursus is already at the top of the screen. Um, yes, I see it. And all of those little uh, VORs and whatnot, that's basically the outline of Cuba, so. The last one that we have there, which is M-U-B-R, uh -huh. that's right along the coast, pretty much. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. Right. Yeah, it's directly out the window there. Now, holy okay. crap, the weather cleared up. Wow, where did all the clouds go? That's right. Huh. Clear skies ahead, baby. Well, let's hope that they uh, stay that way by the time we reach Miami. Now, last I checked, uh, when uh, Microsoft was promoting uh, FSX back in the day, mm -hmm. they said that these guys are astrono are uh, so now what's what's the primary word? Astronomically correct or accurate. whatever. Yeah, yeah I've heard true. that as well. I've never actually tested it because even though I know my signs and like Scorpio, Taurus, and all that stuff, I could not even tell you where in the hell to find them in the sky. I'm lucky I could tell you where the Big Dipper is, and half the time, everything that I'm looking out there looks like the Big Dipper to me. <laughs> Astronomy <laughs> was never my subject. Astrology, on the other hand, oh yeah, I'll tell you, your future, man. <laughs> but astronomy, nah. Which is funny, because when I was a kid, I always wanted to be an astronaut. All right. Well uh, top of descent marker is starting to show up on the ND. It says we've got approximately 112 miles to go till Ursus. Okay, that's not too shabby. 21 minutes. Yep. What's our current speed? Still locked at 0.79. So far, this thing has behaved flawlessly. 
I have zero complaints with this thing. How are we doing on gas, though? Uh, we have about 8,200 pounds left. Okay, yeah, that should be enough, because we're more yeah, than we halfway should, through the journey right now. We should have about 5,000 in reserve when we, get, when we get there. Okay. I am okay with that. What I am not okay with is having to land in Bimini. Because I don't think that runway can handle us. Well, maybe it could, I don't know. Hey, do me a favor. Um, let me see here, let me think. Yeah, you're, you, you, you probably won't be able to see the documents I have in my, my uh, tablets. Mm, no, matter of fact, I can't see the tablets because we already moved them. You put them back. Can you go ahead? I know, the, I know you have to click on something, but I can't see what to click on. I think it is the... No, it's not the yoke. And I got it. I got it back up. Oh, wait. How did you do that? Um, there is a... Where the tablet slides down in there, in between... Just go ahead and click. Okay. But you gotta see what you're doing first. Uh, yeah. This is true. Maybe but you know what? I don't think I need mine on. I can see yours on the other side, so I'm just gonna leave it off for now. You can see what I have up on mine? Yeah. Well, I can't see... I know you're on the main page, but I can't see what you've got on there. I'm going to switch over to the co-pilot seat real quick here. Can you see what's on mine? All right. I am on a page here that says Example Screenshots and Checklist. Example Screenshots and Checklist. Click on Checklist. Okay. Well, the checklist that should pop up is the regular checklist. Okay. So you, you, you're not seeing... What I did was I took uh, Snagit and I did some screen scrapes okay. of the approach plates that I got on the internet. Those are the ones that I sent you. Okay, I did not add them to my documents, so they're not popping up. All I see are the three checklists that I had included when I had um, upgraded this aircraft. I tell you what, go ahead and um, say, go ahead and <laughs> add them to the folder. Uh, once you add them to your folder, if you want to go ahead and do that, they should be available for you to, for you to reference. Not while we're flying. We'd have to Not restart. While we're flying. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Besides, right. I mean, we'll put the plot the route that's going to take me right up to the runway. So, I mean, we should, you know. Yeah, I really shouldn't have an issue with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Now that we are just about passing the coastline of Cuba, do you want to switch seats? I'm already in the co pilot seat right now. All right. Come on over. Bring up the iPad on this side. Yeah. See, I can't see where the hell it is. Let me. Uh, oh, you need that light on again. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Damn, that is right. bright. Holy crap! <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, got my iPad up. Yes, you do. Uh, close that. Go to my documents. Go to my KMIA, runway 9, JPEG. I have that up. Uh, where's the zoom on this thing? It had a zoom. Uh, it should be your mouse scroll wheel. So if you just put it right yes, over it. that did it. Yes, that did it. That did it. Okay. All right. So how about you kill that light? <laughs> yeah, it's too bright. Okay, hang on. Let me... Dying over here. There we go. Oh, much better. Even though the viewers probably can't see crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thank you for saving my eyes while in this stupid VR thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am on the co-pilot side and Ursus is 78 nautical miles away. Um, you know what? I am going to use this side MFs or FMC, I want to see what we have set on a perf page for descent. Alright, that's cruise. Um, do you let the FMC pad the descent? Not always. That's why I want to make sure. It's going to automatically limit us to um, 250. Because if you look at your FMC on that side, you see by the time we hit lovely, the speed that it has it programmed in is 245, so it's it's going to be working everything down. But so let just, me ask you something. Are you, so you're gonna let, you're gonna let it fly the vertical file too? Yeah, why not? It's already programmed in, and I've never tried it before. Usually, I end up doing it manually. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, I always fly the vertical profile myself. I mean, it's set right now, so it should know what it's doing. But.
worst case scenario, we could always hit the little profile button just to the right of the altitude hold and manually move the little vertical speed indicator. Yeah, you got a good point. We'll you see how it goes. Point. It's really not that difficult. I'm more worried about LNAV more than anything else because, I mean, if we're coming in to the east in Miami, it means that we're going to have to basically go downwind towards the Everglades and then eventually uh -huh. make a U-turn. So if we're too high, we just go all the way over to Fort Myers and then turn around and come back. All right. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right, should be approaching Ursus relatively soon. Hey, can you see the uh, the moon reflecting off the ocean? I can. Uh, off to the left? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. We've got the same thing there. Oh, wow, the cabin is actually 75 degrees, or set for 75 degrees, but the back half of the cabin is 64 degrees. The front half of the uh, cabin is 75 degrees. What's the pressure back there? Um, down to 60, feet. Okay, yeah, 60 to 70. Uh, even as a status of the outflow valve. Wow. Mm -hmm. Where is the outflow valve anyway? Do you know? I do not know. But I do know that on the overhead, it is on the right hand side. It gives you that same depiction, only physically. Okay. But hey, it's not did you like remember the 737 where you have to like set your cruise and set your landing. Yeah, elevation. it's all out of that. Did you hear that about, it was all over the news, these, uh, these pilots in China, they were vaping in the cockpit. Oh dear God. <laughs> <laughs> I know where this story's going, you don't even have to finish that story. No, I haven't heard it, but yeah. And, and he goes to turn on, he goes to turn off the research fans because he doesn't want the quote unquote vape smoke, even though it's not smoke, it's water vapor. <laughs> he did not want that getting recirculated uh, back into the, uh, to the cabin, but instead of hitting the research switches, he hit the pack switches. Oh no. And then, so the cabin depressurized instantly. And then the uh, oh, the masks fell down. Everybody freaked out. And then they made a mad dive down to a lower altitude. But by the time they got down to 22,000 feet, they realized, hey, if I just turn on the packs, everything is back to normal. <laughs> 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 okay, and all because of vaping. Basically. All because of living. Anyhow, they got fired. Wow. Well, so. geez, I wonder how. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, evidently, uh, yeah, they can they vape in the cockpit. So. Oh well. What kind of a dumbass? <laughs> but yeah, he thought he was hitting the uh, the research fan, but instead he hit the uh, the pack switch and turned off. But evidently, now I thought that if you turn off packs. It should take a couple minutes before the cabin depressurizes. Evidently, that's not the case. Yeah, one would think, but I don't know, you know, how that whole ductwork system or whatever works. But I would imagine if you're at altitude and you're depressurizing, it's probably the equivalent of untying a balloon knot. Well, yeah. Here, here's how the here's how the, the pressurization system works. Okay. Hmm. So you get you get bleed air from the end. Right? Mm -hmm. Run right. the thread in a cooler to cool it off. Then the engine, the bleed air goes into the air conditioning system where they mix it with recycled air from the cabin. Okay. Okay, and then they pump that back into the cabin. Now, somewhere in the fuselage is a valve that slowly leaks air out of the cabin. Okay? Hmm. It's called that. That's, that's what's the, uh, the, uh, that's the uh, outflow valve. Now, if you want to increase the air pressure in the cabin, all you need to do is tell that valve to slow down, but it don't leak so much air. Only leak a little bit of air huh. uh, as the pressure increases. If you want to depressurize the cabin, all you have to do is make it easier for air to flow through the valve. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha, gotcha. So it's kind of like a garden hose type. Exactly. Okay. So, and and that way you're not constantly recirculating st uh, stale air. You're you know dumping some air and at the same time uh, bringing in fresh air from the engines. Mm -hmm. So I figure if you turn off packs, it's going to take a little bit of time for that air to flow through the outflow valve. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, the uh, cabin altitude at most planes is between six and 7,000 feet. Right. It's really not all that up there. Right. So it only has 3,000 feet of depressurization to go. Yeah. So five miles to Ursus, by the way. Yep. Top of the sense. Where's the 
top of the sun on this thing? Is that that little arrow? Uh, yes, the one that's kind of going off to the right and pointing slightly down. That's what the, that's what the top of the sun means? That's top of the sun, yes. There was an opposite one that we had when we were coming up. It looked different. It wasn't like an arrow type thing. But for when we were coming up, the top of climb, yeah, it looks different as well. But it always yeah. calculates all of that stuff. And it varies depending on, you know, like your speed, your angle, all, all nine yards. And it does that real time. What about clouds? on your side yet? Oh yeah, I'm looking at them right now. Funny you should mention that. They all just started materializing to the right and they're yep. at directly ahead. I only see like a couple of puffs on the left hand side, but I'm mainly looking on the right. Does look beautiful though. Oh, um, hey, go ahead and tune uh, Kong 1 to uh, 119.15. Okay. So, COM1, that is 119.15. Okay, something just happened here. Houston, we have a problem. Uh oh, what's going on? Hang on. Alright. Okay. <laughs> Still on autopilot, so we're doing good so far. Yeah, my uh, my cameras went bonkers for a while. For a moment, I couldn't uh, I couldn't uh, get back into the cockpit. Yeah. All right, so one one nine point one five. Go ahead and make that active. Okay. There we go. And that is Atus for my end. Nice. All right. Um, all right, let's go ahead and start planning the approach. Well, I don't need to plan anything. We have the route mapped out all the way down. So. Yeah, right now, my big thing that I'm curious to see is when these 42 miles elapses, will we already have started a descent automatically? Like, is it going to do the actual vertical profile? So I'm looking at the bear shield right now from the right-hand side to see if there's anything else I need to set up that will allow for that to happen or if it'll just automatically. Well, it's gonna fly the it's gonna fly the ladder profile. It's gonna follow the uh, it's gonna take uh, feed commands from the FMC. The question is, will it start descending automatically? That's now, what I'm, I'm trying to figure out because it's all written in the FMC. So in theory, since it knows when it needs to go down, hopefully it should do that. But one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna decrease my range on the ND just a touch here, and I can already okay. see waypoints for Florida. So. All right, we should we're hitting top of descent in uh, a couple of seconds. So let's see what this thing does. Uh, it says we've got about 35 miles to go, four and a half minutes. The top of descent. Yep. Oh wait, no, that's Fawi. Holy crap! So yeah, we should be at top of descent any second now. All right, let's see what happens. Moment of truth, folks. Moment of truth. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep my white dot on the screen over by profile, just in case I need to hit it. Oh, I, was, I saw the left FMC move. I was like, wait, why is that moving? I'm not touching it. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> All right, I think we're passing top of descent right now. Yes. Okay. okay, you see that? Something change. Yep. yep. Engine's coming back. And vertical speed. But well, it's going to slow down first. Let's see if it pushes the nose down. Right, right. Yes, it is. Um, or is it? Well, it's got to slow down before it pushes the nose down. the top of descent. It did change something on there, so I guess that's like our glide slope. Alright, let me hit profile. We're not, we're not coming down yet. Well, we will be in a second. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I might as well do it anyway. Alright, I 
Alright, I'm going to set that to 1800 and that should drop our speed as well. Okay, so what kind of altitudes are we looking at? For Fowey, we should be around 25,000. Oh, hey, what are you doing? That's the weather. That just came in. Yep. Are you seeing it on your side? I'm hearing it. Alright. Bear with me here. And I see Wind Florida. Wind 7 at 10. Visibility greater than 20. Flute pass. Temperature 29, 24. Ultimate 3004. Uh, runway 9. There yep. we go. Told you. <laughs> Good guess. So we're done with the weather, right? Yeah, go ahead and you can go ahead and switch it. That really clobbered the frames there. <laughs> I know, it's like every time the ATC kicks in, it's like, wow. Yep. And yeah, I go do ahead and see... Do you know that frequency? Alright. Oh, you already did. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, turbulence. Yep, that's going to happen. That is going to happen. To make you feel better, I like shake my head around a little bit. So <laughs> we've got sympathy turbulence. Holy crap! Buckle up. Where's the seatbelt sign? Yes, seatbelt <laughs> sign. Should already be on. I thought. Yeah, yeah we, ne is. we never did turn it off. We never messed it up. <laughs> All right, that's fine by me. Okay, so uh, wait, do we still have the floodlights on? Yes, we do. Okay, really, we didn't need the floodlights on past ten thousand as well. But that's all right. I'm not I even see Miami about it. off in the distance. Yep, directly ahead. Yep. So far, so good. Only thing is, it did not automatically run the vertical profile. Now I don't know if that's user error or if it's simply not supposed to do that. I don't normally uh, have the FMC flat vertical profile, so you know. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can probably live without it for the time being. I do want to make sure that our altitudes kind of match up a little bit. So for Junior, we should be at around 15,000 feet. We are currently at 25,000 feet. So that we're, is correct. we're higher than we should be, but that's because we took kind of long to come down. We actually passed top of descent before. We actually yeah, this started coming down. a lot more automated than, than I realized. Yeah. Checklist is really not that much. It is a beautiful thing. Like I said, I have had nothing but fun in this thing. And, you know, for somebody that's basically sworn off of commercial planes, yeah, th that's saying a lot. For me to actually fly this thing on a semi-regular basis, that's huge. <laughs> that's really huge, because you know me, I'd rather be in a Tomcat. Mm -hmm. Or a helicopter. But yeah, that works. That works. Okay, I'm starting to see VORs. This is good. Alright, let me zoom in one notch. Alright, so there's Junior, which is 24 miles out. We still need to be at 15,000. We're currently at 23. Alright, I'm gonna... Uh, what's, what's our, uh, what's our descent rate? Wow. Currently 2,100 feet. Wait a minute. And I my, also need to change. My PFE says 33. Oh no no no, that's the uh, that was our cruising altitude. I'm sorry. Oh okay. All right. Um, on your side, IAS mock. Okay, that. so hey, I got a question for you. Look mm -hmm. on your PFD. Do you see the traffic coming towards you? Not on my PFD, no. I don't see it on the. ND either, so we're probably not replicating the same exact traffic. Because I, I have how many planes coming? Well, what do you have your traffic set to as well? Oh, I don't, I don't. Well, I have a traffic add-on, oh, but my traffic is really low, it's like 13. Okay, I guarantee you my traffic is less than that. <laughs> Alright, turbulence again, and our speed is increasing. Um, yeah, I have a little sharper of a descent profile for a second here. Because I really want to be at 15,000 by the time we hit Junior, and then I'll shallow it up again. So we're coming down at uh, minus 2,100 feet per minute. She's still 
still holding. She's where she should be. It's just the angle's a little too steep. I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. I'm hearing radio for Piper November 27, whatever, whatever. If you cannot hear that, that's not the same traffic that you have. No, you have, well, evidently, this multiplayer that TFDI implemented doesn't screw with your AI okay. traffic. It doesn't screw with your um, uh, ATC. I'm okay with that as long as there's light traffic in the sim. Where it becomes a problem is if we're coming into, like, New York and you're showing that, you know, we've got a clear path to final. Meanwhile, there's a 747 right up our butt. <laughs> Well, I don't know what to expect at Miami. Hopefully, it will be good. All right. Well, we're at 18,000 right now. So what was that uh, barometric pressure? Um, 3004. Let's set it on my side. Okay. Missed it by one. What the hell? I keep passing it. There we go. Okay, 3004. We're good to go. Alright, I'm going to start shallowing us up a little here. So we're going back to 1800 feet per minute. Okay. And we're just at about 1600 feet, but we're one mile away from Juner. So yeah, we're pretty much on the correct profile right now. Okay. Okay, so next waypoint we should be at 94.41. I'm going to monitor that and see how long it takes to get there. 27 miles. Um, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. I got clouds coming up ahead, by the way. Look at your uh, route. Mm -hmm. You see the problem there? Uh, no. I see a waypoint. I see a VOR. Hold on, let me zoom it out one notch. Okay, the airport is where the circle is. What am I looking for? You see where it says lovely? <laughs> Lovely, uh, go straight ahead. There is no hold in this that I can see. According according to this uh, plan, Lovely is the last waypoint. UHP, that's a Dolphin VOR station. That's right outside of Miami. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, cool. But this this is not showing where Miami is. You know what I'm saying? It kind of is, but it's just not on the screen yet. Like the zoom level that you've got your ND. It's not quite there, but it, you, there's a circle coming into view right now that should be pretty much close to where we need to be. That's that's where Miami is? Yes, if I remember correctly, it usually draws a circle at the beginning and the end of the road. Alright. <laughs> okay, so here here's here's my backup plan. This is what I always like to do. Mm -hmm. Dolphin is right next... Damn it! This doesn't have a course needle, does it? Uh, no. <laughs> it's automated, remember? <laughs> Runway 9 is what we're coming in on. Alright. Uh, Dolphin VRR is 113.9. Um, Alright. Uh, increase our profile. I want to get us back on the glide slope, the proper glide slope. So it's going to increase speed a little bit here. Uh, hang on. We're almost at 10,000 feet and we're at 282. We're gonna stay at the speed limit. We need to slow down. All right. Don't forget, we also have speed brakes too. But if you look on that ND, the little purple ball on the right is actually coming back up. That's what I was trying to get. Uh, yes. Okay. Cool. Well, we're almost back in. Oh, in the clouds. Yeah, I still got a little ways to go before I get the clouds, but then I think our active sky is a little bit different. shallow us up to about 1200 feet per minute because now we are below the glide slope 
and we are closing in on 10,000 so I will grab the lights okay lights yep. are on and we're just about hitting 10,000 right now I'm gonna go to the outside view and get some pictures all right uh, we're back in the cockpit okay so 9441 that's pretty much where we need to be at Lovely. And we're closing oh, there's in on a that. runway right there. Yep. So okay, yeah, there's we're, a runway right we're there. making our U-turn. we got to go out, make our U-turn, and come back in. All right, so at some point, we're going to have to fly uh, um, with, the, with the heading? Yeah. All right, 259. We can keep slowing down. Um, Put your speed brakes off. Uh, very well. Why they exist? Let's get that speed down. Okay, is that KMI in front of us? Uh, that is in fact KMIA. Yes, but that's the crosswind runway that we're looking at, I believe. Right. There's downtown right. Miami, looking as beautiful as ever. Probably the most beautiful I've ever seen it since FSX or FS9, for that matter. All right. Um, shallow side at 5,000 feet. All right, 5,000. Feet back in. Okay, let me look at the checklist. What we want to do is fly the downwind. So let me go ahead and turn our the downwind for 90 is 270. Yep. And okay. you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it on heading. Okay. All right. So you want to set that up for 270? I just did. Yeah, gotta, and then right click, the right click on the knob itself. The pull versus the push. There yes. you go. Yes, there you go. All right. Um, so we are officially off there. Um, what is the approach altitude? You've got the charts for Miami, right? Is it 2,500 or 2,000? I know it's one of the two of them. So minimum safe altitude in Miami is 3,100 feet. Holy crap, that's high. All right. Go ahead and take us down. It's we're, still we're coming on our, down. We're on our downwind right now. Yep. Um, pun, punch in the runway in nine frequency, which is one one zero. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me find it. I don't know about you, man, but Miami looks pretty sweet over here. It does <laughs> A little indeed. Bit bright. for again for nav because remember this thing has the automatic thing so go ahead and set up the radio in the per in the, in the uh, FMC go to radio and put in localizer runway 9 which point nine one one zero point nine is already in um, uh, yes that's because you already set the thing yeah okay cool it's automatic all right, so we're in our downwind, and in fact, the ILS has come alive. So all we need for the, is for the uh, the glide slope to come on up, and we should be good. Okay, so we are now just passing the approach lights for the runway we're looking for. Remember, the runway we want is the one on the right. So, if you want, I can set us up to go to where grit is, unless you want to manually control it. I'll, I'll, I'll do this manually. Okay. Well, then I will make you aware of when we are going to pass grit, which is where you're going to want to make your 90 degrees. Your 90 base degree, leg. I'll, come to my I'll come to my base, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, you All can right, actually ahead. program that in now. Uh, wait, no, because if you do that, it's going to start turning immediately. I'm going to go ahead and fly this manually. Okay. Do it old school. We're down to about 6,000 pounds of fuel. All right. Um, I hate to have to keep leaving this to go to the checklist. Um, I have a checklist on my tablet. Maybe I'll pull it up. All right. Well, I'll keep an eye on everything going on in here. Yeah. Make sure we don't lose it. So you said we're coming down to what? 3,500? Uh, keep it at about 5,000 for now. Uh, we're below that. So I might as well program it to where we need to be. Compromised would do 3,500. Okay. All right. So we work on the checklist. 
Altitude. Yep. And we should be getting ready to make that base leg now because I believe we are passing the turnpike. All right, what's our speed? 249? All right, yeah. um, let me go ahead and dial back the speed a little bit. A little okay. bit. And you want me to get us north? Oh, or? Uh, hang on. Let me go ahead and give it some speed break. This thing will not slow down until you give it speed break. Right, that is correct. And we are now under the glide slope, so we're going to want to make a right-hand turn. All right, go ahead and make your right turn. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, go ahead and make it. Take us on our downwind. All right, so we want zero. Our base. Or uh, one zero, zero yeah. as the case may be. Come on, thing. Not used to manipulating it from this side. Okay, there, there we go. There we go. <coughs> All right, we are below the glide slope. Perfect. So okay. Let's go ahead and keep this up keep this altitude. Now, here's a question that I don't know if we have thought about as of yet. Because I am the pilot flying, motion. is it going to tell me that I need to hand fly oh, once shit. you get this off pilot here. off? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did we change our status? No. Oh, we need to do that. You got the iPad over there. It should automatically switch if you select yeah, there you go. All right, there we go. So yeah, you are now PIC, and we are coming up to Miami. All right, I'm changing my screen to, uh, to uh, what do I need? VOR approach, there we go. All right, crap, I need to swap this over. Ah, eh, don't worry about it, I I'm good. Okay, All right. well. It is your aircraft. I will let you know once we are getting the localizer and the glide slope. Right now we're under the glide slope, but we're stable at 3,500, which should be fine. All right, I'm going to stop my insert. Yep, you might want to set it right now to 090 because we are coming up fast. We actually just overshot it. I do that all the time. Okay, we're still above. Um, uh, we need to arm. Glide slope is fine, we just need localizer. We need to get to where we need to be on the localizer. So we might want to overcorrect a little bit for it. Doing that. Stabilizer all right. motion. That's one. Okay. <laughs> okay, oh, we didn't call for permission to land. Alright, well, you might want to do that. Are you sure? Yeah, why not? We're on the glide right. slope now, almost. It's starting to move anyway. Uh, it's not giving me the option. Alright, the thing is coming down. Let me know when you have visual on the runway. I'm looking. We're getting there, slowly but surely. Okay, I do see the approach lights coming up. We are still a little bit to the left of it, so keep on this heading. But get ready at any second to start pulling us back to the left a little. We are just about on glide slope now. Stabilizer motion. And we are on glide slope. All right, bring our, bring our altitude down about 500 feet. Set us down 500 feet per minute. I got a moon landing on my Oh, it's landing at Opalaka. Are we coming down? Yeah, 500 feet and 500. And you may want to get ready to get us centered up on 090. Don't forget the right click. There you go. All right. We got localizer, we're above glide slope a little bit. We might want to slow right. down some more. Gear coming down. Okay, I can handle that as well. I got it. Okay. All right. Damn it, we didn't get our V-speeds. Yeah, but I have an idea with this aircraft here, so we should be good. Let me know when we're below 200. I will get our next notch of flaps. Put our 
put our vertical speed down about 1,500 feet per minute. Okay. Here is down, landing lights on. Landing lights are on. All lights should be on. All right, autopilot off. Don't forget the yellow button on the yoke. Got it. All right, we yeah. have, you have manual yeah. control? Yeah, go ahead. Autopilot off. Autopilot. Yeah. Okay, All right. you now have manual control of this bird. We right. are to the left of, or yeah, we're definitely to the left of localizer, but you're pretty much on glide slope right now. I'm going to drop us our next button. Bit of flaps, you might want to give us some power, however. Um, don't I have control of the power? Yes, you do, but it has not been. Very good. All right, yeah, it takes now. a while. Oh, yeah, that's right. This plane takes a while for it to spin up. Yeah. How much uh, flaps do I have left? You have one more notch of flaps, which I'm about to give you. All right, I got it. Oh, you gave me the flaps already. Yeah. All right, we're 1400 feet up. That's fine. All right. A little below glide slope, but looking good. Otherwise, we are on localizer. And I think I'm picking up Opalaka. Oh, that looks sweet. That is Miami, baby. That is Miami. That looks gorgeous. Damn it, I lost a, I lost a glide slope. I need to get back in here. Oh, let me go in the cockpit. Okay. Yeah, you're on full manual, so drop your power. Not too much. 1,000. There we go. Okay. You remember the thrust reverser button, right? F2. Okay. You're probably going to need it, depending on where you land this thing. Altitude. Alright. So far, looking good on speed. Keep it right there. We didn't get our landing speeds. Don't worry about it. We can't go much slower than this. It's already in the yellow. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> and I'm a little bit above the ILS. Which is fine, because I'm seeing skyscrapers ahead of us, so... Just stay right down the middle. You're good to go. 400. There you go. Looking good. Hold it like that. You did care for landing, right? Yeah, 300. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I see something holding short. All right. A little bit lower. Minimum. Okay, we're at minimums clear of all buildings, and there is an aircraft holding short. 100. Bring this Glide bad slow. girl home. Glide slow. 40, 30, 20, 10, Sweet five. Sweet mother of pearl. That's it. Bring that nose gear down. Nice. All right, thrust reverse. Just go ahead and take this one right here. Yeah, you might want to give it a little bit more turny turny and a little bit more breaky breaky. Flaps up. Uh, there's several, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, jetways here. All right. Let me, uh, okay. And quite a few of them are occupied or are available. So all I'm going to do. Uh, come left, go around this plane. Okay. Turning off the landing lights. I got the taxi lights on. Yep. I'm working at right now. Okay, there taxi lights are on. Here comes a gas truck. Oh no, that's not a gas truck. Oh yeah, it is a gas truck. Couldn't even tell. Oh, by the way, 
do you know that uh, the HD global textures, you know the ones that uh, Rex does? For the airports? Yeah, I saw that. Finally updated to P3D version 4. I need to update this thing because, yeah, I love that whole package. Alright, I do see what appears to be a pushback truck directly in front of me, so I'm going to assume we're at the right gate. And we do appear to be on the yellow line, so that's also good. There we go. Locking brakes on. That works Turn on the me. EPU. Alright, that's on your side. You know where that is? Yeah, I'll go ahead and get it. Um, okay. APU. Yep. Uh, is that that's the generator? No, 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 no. I want no, this. No, no, Here no. we go. To the left of it. To the left. There's two switches. One for APU air and then one below it. Flip it all the way down so it starts. Got it. Okay. And then let it go. All right, I'm going to turn off our weather radar. There you go. As well as our TARA, because let's face it, we don't I'm, do it. Sorry, I hate to have to do that to you, but no, that's fine. my eyes starting to hurt. I need to see. That's fine. Our uh, APU is spinning up. Okay, APU is on. It's coming up. Man, that was really freaking good. I thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> I mean, now I'm yep. starting to lose a little bit of FPS, but I think that might have something to do with all the lights and everything. Okay, if your generator is on, and now you can go ahead and kill these engines. All right. That's one, that's two. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead and run through. Turn off the TCAS, turn off the weather radar. Yep. Uh, just make our way across this thing to the overhead panel. What? Cast, test, pass. Yeah, I didn't need to do that. Mm. Turn off the fuel pumps. Landing lights are off. Taxi light is off. Go. Um, uh, packs off. There we go. And uh, start pump is off. AP was on. I'm just running across here. Oh yeah, we can turn off our heating systems. Yep. And we can turn off these lights. Yep. All that can come off. Logo is off. This is good. This is good. Taxi lights are off. And we can turn off. Yep. Those two. And let's see. Uh, Emergency lights. Right. Got it. You got. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just turned it back on. There you go. Okay. Off. Okay. All right. Um, not using a checklist, but you know we do have the checklist here. So let's go ahead and pull it up and see what we need to do. All right. Documents. That's you know that's the one thing I loved about this plane and the CRJ was the fact that you could you know have the documents right there. Mm -hmm. And you can't beat that. Yeah, so, I'm still trying to figure out how to put my uh, thing back on here. Because I'm hitting the button, but it's not coming up. After land shutdown. Okay, here we go. All right, spoilers are in. Flaps are up. Radar is off. Transponder is off. APU. I'll uh, turn off for the second. Landing lights are off. Parking brake is set. Seat belt is off. Hydraulics. Let me go ahead and get those. Yep, that's them. Two, three, and four. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? Um, fuel is off. Tax is off. Eye protection is off. Lights are off. Fuel switches are off. And that's it. All we need to do now is turn off our APU. Turn off the generator. Turn off our navs. Okay. Huh? We don't have ground power, but you know what? I don't think we need it. But if you want, yeah. you can open the door and all that stuff. So that way these people can actually get off my plane. 